Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. A glimpse of the real winners. Whom do you actually think are the real winners? What are the most common characteristics of these winners? Is it necessary for us to know about these winners? If yes, why is it necessary? I heard one young Muslim telling me about someone who was a philosopher, who appears to be an atheist, who does not believe in God. However, I felt good for him, recognizing it as one of the characteristics of the real winners. Just imagine that you are passing by a huge mansion and a poor guy is standing in front of it, wearing torn clothes, starving for hunger and having no money to buy food. Can you quickly comment, whom do you think is successful in life? The owner of the mansion or the poor guy who is standing in front of the road? The most common understanding is that, the owner of the mansion is successful man and the poor guy is the loser. Now, consider the rich guy as Fir'aun and the poor guy as Musa Allahi Wasallam when he left the kingdom. You may also consider him as Ayyub Allahi Wasallam when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took away his wealth as a test for him. Even Ibrahim Alayhi Wasallam was left in desert with his mother and was homeless for a certain period of time. As Muslims, we know that the super-rich Fir'aun was the worst loser on earth, whereas these prophets were the real heroes of humanity. The real fact is, the more pious a person is, the more successful he is. Surah Al-Mu'minun, Ayat 1 Ultimate Winners Revealed The first in class of them are the prophets and the messengers. Surah An-Nisa, Ayat 69 revealed the real winners of the world as the prophets, the Siddiqeen, the Martyrs, the Righteous, and their companions. This can be you. Why should we know about these winners? We always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Fatiha to guide us to the straight path of the winners and save us from the path of the losers. The entire Quran contains many stories of these winners as well as the losers and their consequences. So we must know about it in order to follow the winners and stay away from the path of the losers. Actually, we know about Islam till this date for these three group of people. Messengers or Rasul who receives direct revelation from Allah and pass it on. Prophets or Nabi who are commissioned by God to confirm existing scriptures or revelation. And finally, the human messengers. These are all other human beings, including us, who have conveyed the message of Islam, without whom we could not have known about this religion. One important point to note is that we need to know and understand the true message of Islam in order to pass it on to our future generation to save them from misguidance. The common characteristics of prophets were, they were chosen by God, they were the best person of all in their nations, no nations were there without a warner or prophet. They were truthful even prior to their prophethood, they were trustworthy and honest, they were intelligent, they used to be philosophers, they used to think a lot, not just follow their nations blindly. They were trained in some special ways. For example, the Prophet Muhammad said, Allah did not send any prophet but who shepherded sheep. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 2262. They didn't have any repulsive appearances and all were handsome. The most handsome among them was Yusuf alayhi wasallam. They were protected by Allah from committing sin. None of them sought a reward or payment or power against their serving of deen. They were great preachers with direct messages, straight to the point. All had their miracles. The final miracle among them is the Quran. All were tortured and accused to be telling lie and being magician. The concept behind shepherdship. This responsibility requires a lot of effort to guide weak and foolish ships that have a tendency of scattering. Another reason is that the return or reward of this profession is almost negligible. An amazing statistical analysis over the philosophers of the world showed that about 72.8% among the philosophers are atheists, means that they don't believe in the existence of God. Most of these philosophers should belong to a family believing of some religion. But the concept of philosophy makes them seek answers to theological questions. 
even the prophets before their prophethood were not the direct followers of the religion of their forefathers and surrounding nations due to lack of smart human messengers these philosophers and many more people are becoming atheist in the back of their mind not being able to find out the answer of their valid questions i find goodness in them relating to the stories of the prophets even the believing muslims should be able to provide convincing answers to few basic questions like Why do we think there must be a god? What is our purpose of life? Are we really going to be resurrected and make accountable for our deeds? Or there is no life after death, etc. These atheist philosophers and even few non-practicing Muslims are still searching for these answers, and if they can discover reasonable and logical explanations to these questions in any point of time, they may become one of the best believer or follower of Islam. My personal opinion is that we must know the authentic stories of most of the prophets. One might think, how can I be so sure that whatever I am receiving is authentic? The best approach is to read their stories from various sources and then compare them to the plain literal meaning of the Quran. Believe me, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala has revealed the most authenticated version of these stories in the Quran in very simple language which is easily understandable. even by the young teenagers these stories may be narrated to the young kids from their childhood instead of fairy tales the prophet stories are wonderful real life stories which are much more amazing than that of the human made fairy tales there are many lessons to be learned from these stories and if the kids of the next generation grows with the inspiration of these true stories they will surely become among the winners with the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah So please read and try to understand these stories then authenticate them from the Quran and Hadith after valid verification spread the true stories of these winners as much as you can we being muslims have an obligation to follow the religion collectively not individually please don't be afraid to study about islam with the fear that you might get misguided instead ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you and inshallah you will not be misguided in any way remember You may only be easily misled if you don't have proper knowledge and if you don't have the proper knowledge it opens up the risky door of misguidance and misconceptions may allah bless us all amen what is your opinion let us know in the comment section below and if you like this video just hit to the like button and subscribe to the channel thanks